This is the house that hasn't sold in six months. I don't understand why it hasn't sold. It's kind of an odd colour choice, that. At the moment, it's a bit dated. These are killing me. Well, I think we need to dip into the paint pot. I'm really starting to panic now. I thought it would have gone really quickly. In a buoyant real estate market, properties can go within a matter of days, and bidding wars, they're common. So if your house has been on for a while, consider why and act fast. Do you need to revamp the marketing? Consider reducing the price. Is the presentation letting your house down, or the worst possible scenario, a combination of all three? Lynn Clark's house has been on the market for six months, which, in a hot market, is extraordinarily rare. Other similar homes have sold in the neighbourhood in a matter of days, but not Lynn's, and it's standing in the way of true love. She's fallen, hook, line and sinker for Bob, and they're ready to move in together. In fact, they've been ready for six months. But they can't do anything till they sold this place. And that's why we're here, to turn this house from unsellable to sold. I've been in the house for 30 years. My son grew up here. What I love about this house is that it's so open and all the bedrooms are huge. It's been on the market for six months and I don't understand why it hasn't sold. I think the right person with my taste hasn't come through and seen it. Bob and I want to travel, we want to be free. This house is definitely stopping me from doing all of that. This is costly. This is costing us a fair amount of money per month. Plus, we have to come down here and still do the cleaning and making sure that nobody's breaking into the house. If we could get rid of this, it would be financially much better for us to travel and do what we want to do. Lynn's house has been on for six months. They've had 10 open houses and dozens of viewings, but not a single offer which leads me to suspect it's either overpriced, there are problems with the curb appeal, or presentation. But I'm gonna go and find out. Hi, Sophie, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. So, this is the house that hasn't sold in six months. Yes. I'm really starting to panic now. I thought it would have gone really quickly. I feel a bit like I'm in a doctor's waiting room. It's quite cold at the moment. I think it's the white walls. When did you decorate this room? Early 80s. I see that vertical blinds are a bit of a theme. I know, they were popular at the time. <laughs> Along with puffball skirts and pom-poms. Exactly. Wow, an incredibly clean kitchen. I like clean. Well, clean and neat is good, especially when selling your house. Now, what's through there? That's the family room. I'm going to go and peep in. Lovely floors. Nice, bright room, but at the moment, it's a bit dated. It is very dated. Should we Not go upstairs? Yes. Wow, <laughs> this is surprising. From the outside, it doesn't look this big at all. It is a very big house. People don't realize that. What's through here? This is the second bedroom. Kind of a bit impersonal at the moment. Mm -hmm. So this is the guest bedroom? Yes. I like this blue. It's a good blue. Which leads me on to the grey. All the doors and all the trimmings are all grey. It's kind of an odd colour choice, that. Well, I think we need to dip into the paint pot. So this is your room. Yes. Lynn, these are killing me. I know, but I liked them at the time. So now we've done the tour, I think we need to go downstairs, sit down and come up with a battle plan to get this house sold. All right. I don't care how nice this street is, at the moment no young person is going to walk into there and think this is the home for me. I mean the exterior of this place looks completely different from any other house on the block and it's not showing well on the inside either. It's just so cold and those vertical blinds are definitely not for me. On paper, this house reads like a dream. It's one of the most popular neighbourhoods in Toronto, one of the biggest houses on the street, and you've got a good-sized lot. On paper, it's great, but it really lacks wow factor. On the outside and on the inside. The vertical blinds, the colour palette, and the dated furniture all age this house. A lot of buyers, they think emotionally. They walk into a space and they fall in love with it, and they're like, I've got to have it. And at the moment, you walk through that door, and the first things you think of a bit dated. You don't, you're not, you don't have those strong emotions and that's what we want people to have. But I haven't been spending any time in it the last few years. I've yeah. been out living life. Exactly. So we've got to get rid of this house so you can do more of that. Let's face it, your house looks different on the outside and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. But we can make the inside more in keeping with the neighbourhood. Making this house 
less suburban and more cutting edge. We just need to do a bit of work to get the house up to standard. Quite a bit of work, I think. <laughs> Lynn's neighbourhood is now a really popular location for city folk who are looking for their first family home. But what Lynn needs to realise is people buy emotionally. It's only the more experienced buyers that can see through good and bad decor and realise the potential of the space. It can be difficult selling an unusual house. I know how I'd tackle this one, but I'm curious to talk to Lynn's real estate agent to see how she'd do it. When you walk down the street, you notice that this house is not typical of the street. Some people really like that it's very unique looking, yeah. and others have found it too different for their taste. The positive feedback that we've had has been that you have very large principal rooms, which is extremely rare in Toronto. Why do you think it's not selling? There's a new wave of young urban professionals yeah. that are moving into these neighborhoods, and they're not into updating a home in terms of its decor. I have to talk to you about the, the listing price. You would like to take it down? Yes, I would. That's a correct decision because ultimately something's only worth what someone's prepared to pay for it. Absolutely. The house is immaculately clean, it's decluttered, so we can kind of take it on from there. I cannot wait to get rid of the vertical blinds. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Having spoken to Catherine, the real estate agent, it is obvious to me she has done absolutely everything in her power to get this place sold and has had no luck whatsoever. So it's down to us. I want to give this house wow factor and turn it from a doctor's waiting room into a really warm home. Being the odd man out in a social situation can be tough, and it's the same with houses. If your house is uh, dramatically different to everyone else in the neighbourhood, you could have a problem. Sometimes people come to a neighbourhood expecting to find a certain type of house with associated architectural details and features. So if your house is very different, it can be more difficult to sell. So you might need a new game plan. This is the house I want to show you. As you can see, it's a bit more traditional than your house and more in keeping with the neighbourhood. But I want to show you the inside because from a real estate perspective, it's really hitting all the right notes and it's showing fantastically well. What I like about it is it's modern, but it's kept the kind of architectural details and character of a hundred-year-old home. And that fireplace is great. As soon as you walk in, it draws your eye to it and it's mm -hmm. attractive. Curtains rather than blinds. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> nice neutral paint colour. I like the way the trim is white. The big difference back here is that the kitchen's bigger and it's also more high-end. But in some ways they're quite similar. Your kitchen is incredibly clean, it's immaculate, so it's perfectly acceptable. And you have the bonus feature of having a family room out back, which this house doesn't have. This house is noticeably smaller than Lynn's in almost every aspect. So what makes it more sellable? It shows fantastically and the decor fits in perfectly with the neighbourhood. Something Lynn's going to have to do to make up for her home's unusual exterior. This is the smallest of the two. This is more the size of the little bedroom. Yeah, the little like bedroom. This. What I like about upstairs is the cream walls and the white trim. It's just very classic. I'm beginning to like that. The pros of this house are it's very modern, very high-end, and it's really in move-in condition. No one would have to touch a thing. It's smaller than mine, but mm -hmm. it's very, very modern. All white trims and pale walls. Now I'm seeing the disadvantage of the white walls and the, and the vertical blinds. And I think this is a great combination of contemporary chic marrying in the period features. The outside of this house is the kind of traditional house in this neighbourhood, so it's probably what people are going to be looking for. It sold in a week for more than $50,000 over the asking price. Wow. And, and your house is more unusual looking, but if we make the interior of your house have the kind of wow factor that this house has, then, you know, I think we're on to a winner. We've got to overcome the oddball exterior of Lynn's house by really enhancing the interior. And I'm sure general contractor Anthony Sayers will have some great ideas on how to do it. Nice house, by the way. Thank you. These two rooms, quite large, but there's no focal point when you walk into this space. So my eyes automatically go to the carpet or the ceiling. I think by building built-ins with the fireplace in the middle, we'll just take your eye over here instead of everywhere else. You don't think it'll make the room look smaller? No, because um, the depth of it is going to be maybe 15 to 16 inches deep. So you're not going to lose very much space on the wall. So It'll give it the punch it needs. And the top, we're going to put crown molding. So that'll create a nice architectural detail. Want to create character. 
and window dressings. Get rid of the 70s, 80s kind of blinds. And the carpet. We're gonna take up the gray carpet because it is a little doll again. Nice neutral carpet. And yeah. what do we doing upstairs? Upstairs, there's a lot of gray trim, so we just need to liven it up. And also we're gonna paint the um, front door because the house almost shrinks back into the lot. It doesn't pop out. It's sad to see them go. They were nice. And that was very modern at the time that I picked them up. Are you cross with me? I was in the beginning, but these are dated, and they do look like a waiting room. The reality of the whole move is really beginning to set in now that I'm actually packing stuff and moving stuff out of the house. The whole house is changing. This is really killing me. I love this gray. It's really sad to see it go, but I understand why it has to, and I want to sell the house and get on with my life. much warmer in here. Yeah, and we're pretty like much... Like all the pink hues matching the walls. Yeah, it was the grey that was killing everything. It was very old. It was sucking the life out of this yeah. room. Well, we better get a wiggle on, anyway. A wiggle? Don't what you is... say that. You know, get a wiggle on. Uh, get gotta a move a... on. We've got to move on, yeah. OK. I've got bedroom, closet, east wall, and missing in action. You know how long I've been looking for those pieces? Good thing we labeled the baseboard pieces or else we wouldn't be able to find them. Curb appeal is really important when you're selling your house. And in this case, it was really getting lost back then. I don't think people were noticing it when they drove past. So by adding a fire engine red door, we're hoping it will really pop out and entice people in. We've got to make sure that the shelves are strong enough to hold anything that we put on them. So we'll use three quarter inch material and build them two feet wide. So that should be more than strong enough. Ooh, so this is gonna be filled in here? Yeah, there's gonna be adjustable shelves mm -hmm. there and at the bottom. Over here is gonna be where the actual insert goes in. Right. The fireplace. So, so these so are gonna be covered move. shelves here and then these are gonna be like shelves that you can see. Yeah. So to put like CDs and yeah, stuff on. Yeah, exactly. You like it? Yeah, I do. I think the changes, it looks spectacular. I always felt the house looked a little on the white side, a little drab. I think it needed color. I think it needed focus somewhere, because it was not that nice as far as walking in and going, woo. It was walking and going, oh, this is nice and big. Making your home fit into the neighborhood is critical. And this home that's sold in a similar neighborhood is a great example of living up to home buyers' expectations. Unlike Lynn's house, the first impression is spectacular. It's a superb blend of contemporary design and antique architectural features that match the vintage of the neighborhood. The original moldings and the updated styling tell precisely the design story that a home buyer would expect. Maintaining and incorporating original features really shows off the spirit of the home. These bedrooms use props and accents with antique styling that is in sync with the home's vintage. The window dressings have been removed altogether, which is a really great way to brighten up the presentation. Hopefully we'll be able to resurrect the spirit of Lynn's home because this home was on and off the market in just a few days. A little nervous. A little. It's a lot of change in just this week. Have you been upstairs yet? Yes. What do you think? You're adding warmth to each of the rooms. You've got to admit that this carpet is nicer than the one you had. Way better. <laughs> it's going to look like someone else's house. We'll get you on a motorbike in Mexico soon. Oh, any day. <laughs> On paper, Lynn's house should have sold, since it's one of the biggest houses in the neighborhood and it's got a good-sized lot. 
but Lynn's plain Jane house was lacking wow factor. So we warmed it up, added architectural detail, and I know we're going to get a lot of interest. Regardless of how it looks on the inside, curb appeal was a big obstacle for Lynn's home. While a full exterior reface just wasn't in the cards, we painted the door red to add a splash of colour to the facade. Our real challenge was inside. The first impression was in need of a major makeover. The warm colours and gorgeous updated styling have made a huge difference. The wall unit and fireplace adds a stunning focal point and the new carpet is luxurious and comfy. The abysmal vertical blinds are long gone. Now this home's first impression is right on target with neighbourhood expectations. The second living room was just as chilly and uninviting as the first, but updated furniture, paint colour and striking red accents give this room a welcome burst of energy. We've been able to reuse both of the glass coffee tables on the main floor to help keep costs down. Lynn's master bedroom was huge but depressingly hollow. With the grey mouldings brightened up and the paint colour warmed up, this large space feels much more inviting. This bedroom office combo was a water cooler and a photocopier away from becoming an accounting office. This new design scheme and layout presents a cosy guest room much more in tune with the expectations of prospective buyers. The total for this job was $5,000, which may seem like a lot, but an investment like this can help maximize returns and help move a property quickly. But there's still a lot of work to do. We need to get the word out on this refurbished property. So here are some tips on how to remarket your home. If you've got an unusual property for the neighborhood, celebrate its uniqueness. Start your marketing with positive features that differentiate your house from all the others in the neighborhood. Activity without offers can suggest that your house is overpriced. Ultimately, your home is only worth what someone is prepared to pay for it, and that is dependent on the market, the competition, and the condition of the house. If your property has been on the market for a long time, you might have to get the real estate agents excited again. And if it takes a bit of enticing to get them out, so be it. The house is totally warmed up. It's more of a show house. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think that anybody coming in is going to say, wow, I could move right in, and I love this house. Well, that's that then. In a few moments, prospective buyers and agents will walk into this house. we just got to cross our fingers that they snap it up so Lynn and Bob can drive off into the distance on their motorcycle and live happily ever after. We've addressed the decor problems, but this house has been on the market for six months and it still suffers from a chronic marketing problem. So I've arranged a few viewings for local realtors to spark a new buzz about Lynn's updated interior. Now, you've been to the house before, haven't I have you? I have indeed. You previewed it with Catherine. I did, and it's certainly a dramatic alteration now. Do you think you're in the same house? It's <laughs> shocking. It's certainly done a nice job. It feels nice and warm, and it feels like a home. I think it's a nice and wide open concept. Oh, a huge difference. Yeah. Dramatic. I think the inclusion of a family room is terrific because mm -hmm. a lot of properties, especially in this price point, they only offer a combined living room, dining mm -hmm. room area. It really does have a wow factor. You know, when you have small kids, you want a room where you can put their stuff. You want your grown-up sitting room where you can entertain your friends, and then you can have a family room which you can just sometimes close the door and just think, ah, leave that there. Just for the fact that you can actually be making dinner and keeping an eye on the kids at the mm -hmm. same time, I think that's a definite bonus. Previously, when I toured with it, I think my clients were really impressed and they were on the fence. This might be enough for them to say, you know, let's move forward. Oh, very nice. Very calm, warm, kind of sophisticated. I love this room. I think they did a really nice job on it. Oh, boy. Best for last, for sure. Isn't this excellent? And this is a properly smart master bedroom. It absolutely is. You saw it when it first came on the market. I absolutely did. And what do you think some of the problems were? People weren't looking at the huge space and huge value that they get from this property. Mm -hmm. It's really exceptional for the area. You're not going to get this kind of space for the kind of dollars they're looking for. And now you can see the space. You can picture yourself here because you're not distracted by things that don't matter, furniture that isn't yours anyway. So the key question is, will you be bringing people back? I would definitely bring buyers, and since it's been a while since people have seen this property, I wouldn't even mention it was the same one. And we'll see what they say. I love that. 
I'm certainly going to be bringing it back to the attention of my past clients. Mm -hmm. I think that they'll be fairly impressed with what they see here, and I'll be interested to see what their opinions are. I think the Realtor Open House was a big success, and it's definitely going to generate some interest. Lynn and her Realtor Catherine are going to be thrilled. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say this is probably about a 10 and a half. Talking about money, mm -hmm. you've had a bit of a breakthrough. Lynn has agreed to lower the price quite drastically in the hopes that more than one person would be interested in purchasing Brilliant. the home. Lowering the price gives it a boost, almost a new lease of life. I think we're going to get a whole fresh new set of people, people that maybe wouldn't have considered it before. Now we've got location, style, a new asking price. I think it's a winner. Absolutely. I agree. This unusual house has a lot going for it, but it was totally overshadowed by the featureless interior that looked a bit like a doctor's waiting room. And after six months on the market, it totally lost its buzz. But now we've added architectural features, a really nice warm paint job, and we've revamped the marketing campaign. So I know that this house is going to go from unsellable to sellable. It's a very beautiful home right now. It's absolutely gorgeous. I wish I was staying. Well, this weekend, every evening, I'll be down here enjoying it. This is going to be wonderful just to sit here and reminisce, but also to let go. I'll take all the memories with me. After revamping the decor and notching up the marketing campaign, it wasn't long before someone fell in love with Lynn's peculiar property. Now that the house is sold, Lynn and Bob, well, it won't be too long before they're riding off into the sunset. We've got baseboard to finish, the, the built-in to finish, yeah. the dressing to do, the hoovering, the cleaning. The hoovering? The hoovering. Wow, you're on a roll today. Vacuuming, sorry. <laughs> Vacuuming. <laughs> got to get a wiggle on. Thank you.